and gentlemen, did you know the greatest man I never knew is Reba McIntyre? <laughs> No, I'm not going to call her that. We might call her Betsy the Cow for too long. Give it up, Miss Reba McIntyre. Well, there is an explanation associated with that. But first of all, ladies and gentlemen, there is another incredible talent in our presence, Christopher Rich. Yay! Oh, I thought you were talking about somebody else. No, no, Brock Hart. I was looking around. <laughs> I was like, who else came with us? So cool to have you guys here. What a huge weekend for you. I'm so thrilled to death because those of us who are fans of the show Reba used to be on the WB. Uh -huh. We were fearful for a while. It looked like that could have been it. We were too. Yeah. yeah but now you're coming back time. on the new CW, and this is season number six. six. Yeah. You know, it's amazing to think there we were fearful that the show might not be again, and now we're going to get to see it twice every Sunday night. Yeah. How did that whole thing come? I mean, that's really cool. You know, when we finished our fifth season, we all left after the rap party and we were just thrilled to death we were coming back for our sixth season and some of us went on cruises a cruise together and we were just really high five and having a great time mm -hmm. we got back off the cruise and heard that we'd been canceled and then they came uh, back you, you said, heard it was canceled not even just like a maybe canceled. it was a, we were an done. out and out canceled. Yeah. canceled we were done wow and the only other show that i know that ha that happened to was the beverly hillbillies after three seasons they left for the hiatus and were called and said, don't come back in the fall. You've been canceled. Richard Jethro. Yeah, that's right. That's so <laughs> so we, uh, we thought, well, it's over. And I went in and I cleaned out my dressing room, which one of the most sad days. You Saturday. seriously yeah, did? The same thing. It was terrible. It was horrible. And then we got another call and said, we've picked you up as a mid-season replacement. So that's kind of like being on the main string of basketball on the ninth grade and going into... Um, at the high school, and you're sitting on the bench, and you got to wait till somebody fouls out before you can go play. That's wow. exactly what it is for us. We had to wait till somebody dropped out. Unfortunately, that had to happen to somebody. Sure. And then we're coming back on as our sixth season, brand new show Sunday night. That is so cool. Now, how how can we find out where it's playing? Because I mean, you know different listings. I really hope that everybody does go to their TV guide or some kind of guide and find out where their CW station is in their area. And then tune in Sunday night at 7 o'clock, 6 central, for an original, followed up by another original. And then next Sunday, yes. it'll be at 7 o'clock, 6 central. It'll be a rerun, and then a, an original at 7.30. And from the word on the set is the, the, the ones that you're doing, this this is your best work yet. Of course, we were all, you know, we're all sitting on the, on the razor's edge. So you want to talk about a cast and a group of writers who are working their butt off. Man. I bet. I was going to oh, say, did it please. give you kind of a different slant on things? When you went back in knowing that you'd almost been, or that you had been on the brink? Well, we've never had a lazy bunch, you know. I mean, we've always had a hard-working group. But when you're thinking, we could be doing our last uh, our last shows together, let me tell you, I think we put extra, extra work into these. I know the writers did. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually our network uh, executives who've come down and watched the show, I, th I believe that they've gone back to the network and said, you guys, we've got we've to get this thing on and on in a big way. These yeah. are great, great shows. We've well, got a lot of support from our execs. And we've got some great, exciting things happening on this sixth season. We've got Kelly Clarkson as one of our guests. No! Yeah, really? That was a blast. Kelly, when she came on, she did a wonderful job. I'm so proud of her. And she's just been accepted as part of the family. Isn't just, that great? We just love her. Oh, she's been hanging out with us a little bit. Yeah. It's been kind of fun. Really? Yeah, it sure has. Uh, a little bit of a dysfunctional family. She's throwing Melissa Peterman into the mix. Sure. Uh, she plays Barbara Jean. And I want to get your best stories related to Melissa Peterman from the Reba Show coming up. Stay with us. More Reba and Chris Cronin. the fancy woman herself. Reba McIntyre. Yeah, still, you know, yeah, didn't you do a good job with that? Didn't she, though? Oh, Thank my you. God, baby girl. Still freaks me out. Last time Reba was kind enough to come by, she disclosed to us, and I'd never even stopped to realize that Fancy had never hit number one, but there it is, her signature song. Never. It was number seven and sold probably more records for me than any other single, but it didn't go number one. Are you serious? That song didn't go number one? Mm -hmm. See, that was my no reaction, idea. too. Yeah, I think Blair, you, you were asking why isn't it on the number one CD? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's because it never was a number one record. <laughs> wow, yeah. isn't that amazing? Yeah. I wonder if they do. And of course, they do testing to see. I mean, we in radio do testing to see how older songs. Now, obviously, there's a reason that Fancy still played so much because it tests so well. Uh -huh. I'd be curious if they did like an exclusive Reba testing. I bet that song would come in number one. Wow. Don't yeah. you think? Yes, definitely. Among Reba singles? Yes. Oh my God, I think that you does have he love to. you. Oh, does that he one does he love you and is there life out there the top three? Wow. Yeah. Now we've we've asked our fans which one's the favorite. Now were those other two? Did they hit number one? Yes. Uh huh. 
Yes. So only fancy. That's odd. Isn't that crazy? You know, another Reva song that I love a lot is called I'll Be. Oh. And it was written by the timeless Diane Warren. Yeah. Did you know that they are going to be doing, they're pitching right now, uh, a television show based on the life of Diane Warren? Oh, my gosh. Who is playing Diane? I don't know yet, but I understand it's going to be her trying to get her kind of dysfunctional family together. And all the meanwhile, she's oh writing gosh. hits for people like you. And So who would you cast as Diane? Oh, my God. There's not another person in this world like Diane Warren. Yeah, wow. You've met her. Yeah, she's insanely talented and very down to earth. Speaking she's of down to earth, <laughs> I want to yeah. share something with you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you said the talented there. Was, was we cool. all have this fantasy about what it must be like to be Reba McIntyre. And I, 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 I don't know why this freaked me out so much, but I got a telephone call saying, okay, Reba's running just a few minutes behind. She'll be there shortly. She's probably pulling into the parking lot. Okay, so I went out there, and I'm very accustomed to when we have you know a big superstar talent come in they have handlers with them like six seven different people <laughs> wranglers so wranglers exactly star wranglers so i'm out there waiting in the parking lot for this stretch limo to pull in and reva to come out with her uh, you know sunglasses does he love you outfit you know the sunglasses on and everything and she never comes in and so i thought i'm gonna just take a look in the courtyard and i see reva sitting by herself at a table and i said reva she goes oh hey blair and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, where is everybody? She goes, oh, it's just me. She drove herself over here. <laughs> well, I, don't, I so never so think <laughs> of Reba McIntyre driving herself. Well, that's because her Papa Clark would beat her bottom. <laughs> she was wasting money on a driver. Oh, Lord. Are you really conscious of things like that? You, I mean, you don't spend money frivolously. Uh, it's not. It's not a money issue. It's a time management thing. Because uh, we just got through with rehearsals today on our thirteenth show mm -hmm. of the sixth season. And which, I, by the way, Sunday night, CW Network. Check your local listings. And yeah, then, you can go to CW.com, by the way, and find out what your local station number oh, is and all great. that stuff. You can. You can go that's to CW.com. Not that we're out. pimping for the show, but I, I am. I am <laughs> totally. In fact, I'm putting on the big hat right now. You Yo, yo, baby, you're watching the show. You got to find it. Good. And anyway, after we got through with rehearsals, I had to run over and do a wardrobe real quick for the show and mm -hmm. other things I'm doing. Jump in the car and head right on up here. So it was, you know, it's time management. Narvel usually is always with me, but Narvel's in Dallas. He's coming back tonight. He's been in Dallas working on the bedding line that's going to be out in March. I and heard you and Dillard's are doing some new stuff together. Yeah, we've got the clothing line already in our second year, and now next year, 2007, we'll be putting a bedding line. So now you can sleep with Reba. Oh, Somebody Lord, have mercy. I'm that's telling you. Oh, oh, my gosh. Still, that's you know, I'm something. just hoping the show goes forward so I can get some free sheets. <laughs> <laughs> really, really what I'm looking forward be to. Be careful of the vowel sound. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> you know, I, I was going to say, she won't even let me, like, use her name to get a dinner reservation. I, you know, I have to use her husband's name to get a dinner Narvel reservation. Narvel Blackstock. Yeah, I know. It's like, I need a table for four Friday night, 8 o'clock for... Narvel Blackstock. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay, well, listen, listen, wait. No, it's not. Uh, now, Reba... What is it like? How much planning do you have to do? I'm thinking like when you played Vegas, yeah. you were nice enough to invite me to come out and watch your show, which was amazing. Thank you. I'm curious, though, when you are in a situation like that, an enclosed area, if you and Narvel and Shelby wanted to go to dinner, you had to be very careful about how you're going to get there and because otherwise you're going to get stopped and once you get stopped by one person then this like swarm of activity yeah we never get to dinner if we do it that way exactly how are you able to do that well in vegas it's real easy because you go down the service elevators and you go through the kitchen and you go through this other kitchen and you sneak kind of through the back way that's the elvis tunnel isn't it yeah that's yeah everywhere amazing. you go in vegas you know right there at the las vegas hilton where we were playing mm -hmm. they'll say the security guards will go elvis walk down this hall <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh no kidding you get the elevator Elvis was in this elevator. Okay, enough. Elvis was here. Yeah, right. And then you see another corner. Elvis threw up over here. Vegas <laughs> <laughs> is fascinating. That I can say you can see like the jumpsuit scratches on the sides of the elevator because he barely fit in there. Oh, 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 oh. You gonna finish that jelly donut? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. All right. Stay with us. More with Reba and Christopher Rich coming up on After Midnight. After Midnight tonight, ladies and gentlemen, some of her earlier work. Give it up for Reba's Little Rock. Yay! Reba and Christopher Rich. Reba had walked off to speak some uh, uh, other people that are in the room here. When he walked away, or when you walked away, Reba, he was telling me about speaking at the uh, Giants uh, tribute on CMT. Which, by the way, could that have been any cooler? That was so neat. 
And what he was saying was, he said, you know, I know people get sick of me saying about how normal she is, but you really and truly are. Well, thanks. Thanks. That that tribute, that was so much fun. For my girlfriends to be up there singing the songs I've been recording and singing for the last 30 years. And, and then my friends get up and speak about me. And, and your family. Oh, my family being there. And all my friends from music and TV to be there. It was just a night I will never forget. It I looked over at Norval and I said, this is the best night. I said, I like this better than the award show. So he said, well, of course you do. They're all talking about you. <laughs> I said, that's what it is. That's the thing. <laughs> it was great. I said my favorite thing about getting to go out there and talk to the redhead was that I got to say all the things that I wanted to say to her within my allotted time, and she couldn't say one word back. <laughs> she just had to shut up and listen. But you know what, though? It's funny, because one of the things that I have noticed about you, Reba, not a lot of people have this gift, and that is to accept compliments. Oh, I'll take them all day long. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, I love to hear that but, kind of No, stuff. but people say oh, things to you. You hear it all the time, and I think a lot of people don't know how to take a compliment. You know, they always say, oh, well, you know, they blow it off as uh -huh. if it doesn't have any value. But you have a real grace about that. Well, thank you. You know, it's, see? Good example right there. Thanks. You know Nicely what? You're done. exactly right. In fact, there was a very famous actress at your CMT thing. The, the group that I was standing with was having a conversation with, and we were talking about, oh, all sorts of stuff, and uh, at one point, one of the women in the group said, I, I just want to tell you, I love your work, and this actress went, oh, okay, and walked away. Really? It was like it just took her out of her. I think she didn't want to be in that realm considered as a star and, and somebody be a fan. She wanted the friendship. She wanted something the normal. But you know the great thing about you, honey, is that you you would never that would never throw you off for a second. It's all part of you. You're not separated that way. It's all one package. You're just this normal girl who, with this incredible set of pipes and pretty decent comic uh, timing and a nice That's looking body. Funny. I and, really uh, help. She's very. I'd funny. like to make out with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you've actually made out with James Denton. Yeah. No, I was talking about Reba. I'm talking about Reba. Because that's a rumor that's floating Maybe around. that's one of the things that they're going to do to keep season six exciting. <laughs> well, well, we've tried everything else. <laughs> Barbara Jean is actually a man. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody could play it, Melissa Peterman could. Oh, believe me. Believe me. Speaking of, I said moments ago that we were going to get your best Melissa Peterman stories. People don't realize this woman is truly off her rocker. Oh, my gosh. She oh. is one of the funniest people, witty. period. Witty. She is so witty. Oh, throw and, anything out there and she's gone and with you it. Put Steve Howie in the room with oh, Melissa God. Peterman. They feed off each other. Yeah. And that's all we did today was sit there and laugh. I'm surprised we were through rehearsing by the time the all the execs came down to watch our run through because we were laughing oh, my God. all day long at those two. They come down to watch your run through. Mm -hmm. Does oh, that make you nervous? The executives do the the writers and and their showrunner. Our showrunner does. And no, it doesn't make no, us nervous. Not really. nervous at all. No, it's mm -hmm. getting the group to get. We really do things as a as group. A team. I mean, having that team there. It's like it's a work session, man. We're going to solve problems. It's a problem-solving session. No, I love it when they're down there. In fact, you sometimes are frustrated when we're rehearsing away and we have a problem and they're not right there so we can address it. And we go, okay, well, we'll wait till hmm. until they get down here and we can work on this thing. But no, man, we, it's not that kind of deal. It is the coolest... Once again, the Reba McIntyre effect. I'm going to write that book. The Reba McIntyre <laughs> effect. It's the coolest place in the world to go to work. Without naming names, have you ever worked on a project where it's been a situation you like betcha. that? I've worked on plenty. Plenty. Wow. I've also worked on some wonderful projects. I mean, just wonderful things, but never, ever. And man, Blair, I've been doing this a long time. I know I look young and fresh. <laughs> but, <laughs> he is you. so funny. But, Go ahead. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> right over that soundboard. <laughs> no, I've been doing this a long time, and um, this is the best work situation. Uh, not just for me, but for every single person from the craft service guys to the executive producers of that show that any of us have ever worked on. And the heartbreaking thing, I think, for uh, some of the guys is that uh, they know that uh, in all likelihood they won't ever get anything like this again. This is the best feeling. you'll ever see. And I feel bad about the Steve and Melissa's and Joanna's and uh, those guys because, you know, they've got long careers ahead of them. Um, and... Man, they're just not going to... They'll never see this again. I, I mean, unless maybe they've taken a page from your book, 
And if they do get their own show, that they just demand that it be done in a civil, respectful, oh, I know loving they would. way. Yeah, they I would bet be. they would. Joanna Garcia's got the biggest heart of any person I've ever met. Oh my, in my gosh, life. She does. and she's had a great. See, by the way, she Joanna Garcia. Joanna Garcia could be the one reason to watch these thirteen episodes. She is phenomenal. I mean, just if you're a fan of the show, her growth as an actress, unbelievable. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Not only show. actress. She's coming up. Her her acting is so real, so just in time, right? And it's not calculated. It's so natural. And then the idea she's coming up with and blocking. And I think I'll go over here because of this. It would really look good if I did this. And if you came over here, the idea she's coming up with. She didn't have those last year. No, isn't that it's something? Great. It's great. She is so good. Yeah, she's very good. And like I, you know, I was lucky enough to meet her at your concert yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. Could not be a sweeter girl. Oh, she's, she's a doll. She's biggest a good girl. heart in the world. Yeah. Now I'm curious. We we've been talking about you know, Riva. You've been involved with so many different projects, and somewhere along the way, has there been someone under your umbrella that may, maybe Narvel saw as like, oh man, she's starting to get an attitude, or he's starting to get an attitude. And if they had to have like a little come to Jesus meeting with, <laughs> with anybody, me? say, or somebody no, else. no, with you, some, not you. I was just, if, no. if anybody ever does have an attitude around What did you hear about her drinking? Us? Yeah, if anybody has an attitude around you, how do you handle that? I, t I call my sister, and I say, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> i got to tell you this story. We'll have oh, my day. God. I shouldn't have taken a sip of water. My older, my older <laughs> sister, Alice, is, is probably one of the most blunt persons I've ever, people I've ever met in my life. And I was home uh, for Mama's 80th birthday, and we were sitting around in Mama's kitchen, and Alice and Susie has just redone Mom and Daddy's house for them. Mm -hmm. Mom and Daddy came out here, stayed uh, 20, oh, 10 or 15 days with me and while Alice and Susie redid their house. And I was sitting in the kitchen, and I looked up, and on the wall for years have been this decoupage little clock thing with my picture on it that a fan had given Mama. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, and it was gone, and I looked over at Alice, and I said, uh, well, thanks for taking my picture down. She looked over at me, and she said, yeah, we were all sick of it. <laughs> I was like, oh. okay, so mind. you're good at taking compliments. She's the one good at dishing out the. She uh, takes me down to the earth. Yeah, so we were you all think sick that of her it. family keeps her in line. Oh yeah, Lord, live! Yeah, you don't have a chance. Well. But if anybody is around us, and especially on the set, get a little attitude. We all jump on them. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, what? Who you think you are? You yeah. Know, come, come on down. Get back down here with the rest of us. Yeah. I can't really say the word, but we have like one of those, you know, like a no smoking sign. Mm -hmm. Well, we have one of those circle things, and it, it's about um, a how what jerks. Attitude. Oh yeah. 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 No attitude. Bad attitude. No yeah. bad attitude. No, no bad attitude here. Seriously, yeah, nobody attitude. gets to do it. But no yeah. bad nobody attitude. gets to do it. No. That's awesome. Nobody. That's right. You know what? And it comes through on the screen. When you watch Treva on the CW, and again, you're going to check your local listings. When you watch that show at 7, 6 Central on Sunday nights on the CW Network, because you're going to check your local listings. Well, and then 7.30, 6.30. Because hey, come on, shows. Chris. 7, this is 7.30, 7.30. 7.00, 7.30, and 6.30. Okay, it goes 6, from 6.30. 7 to 8. Hey, I'm going to need to get six. out a slide rule if this keeps up. <laughs> That's true. Wait a minute. Let's just start and just keep the channel there. Don't move. That's the right. Channel. Keep it. Don't go to the bathroom. The no. sum of two sides of a triangle is equal. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this. It's in my TV guide. <laughs> uh, well, hold on a second. We're going to have to break away for just a moment. More Christopher Rich, more Christopher Rich and Reba McIntyre coming up. You can't say my up. name no matter what, can you, Blair? You make me nervous. I just the fear of being alone. Doesn't want to be an old spinster. Give it up for Reba McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of what that's about, in, in yeah. a way, yeah. right? Right. You don't want to be a, an old no, spinster. It is. It's not going to happen for you, sis. No. Yeah. You really and truly, have you ever felt that uh, in your life, Reba, it's not going to get any better? I don't see how it could get any better. You know, Blair, I've felt that for the last 16 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe 17. But, you know, it, it happens... You know, they, you have your times when you think, oh, my gosh, the rug's been pulled out from under me, and I don't think I'll be able to go on. How do I? Especially the 1991, we're in the plane crash. But other than that, Narvel and I just look at each other sometimes and say, wow, this is, this is scary. Things are going so well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just very grateful. I thank the Lord every day for such a beautiful life that I've, that I've gotten to be a part of. And well, you've, Carl, you've, you've always, you know, I, I just want to I just want to say she never... It, you know, I think that if you ever go, it can't get any better than this, then there's something about you that quits. But I see you striving in every arena all the time to do something better, to do something more, to keep expanding and growing. You're always growing. You're always looking at new stuff. I just love it. I'm, I'm, my curiosity makes me say, wonder if and what if and could we. 
and that just keeps marveling me just fired up and charged up and going again is that what propels you to do the projects like with dillard's and yes you know the broadway curiosity well that was just love of wanting to get on that stage to be annie oakley mm -hmm. i'd turned the part down two or three times mm -hmm. and then uh two or three years after they asked me to do it uh we were going to europe to sing be on television show star sings the beatles songs and we flew our plane up to new york we're going to get on the concord and the catering truck had backed into the Concorde and knocked the door off the hinges, and they had to cancel that flight. You're kidding. Now, is that not weird? You're kidding. We go to to see Annie Get Your Gun because Narvel says, what do you want to do? I said, well, of course I want to go see a play. And he says, what do you want to see? I said, I don't care. And he said, well, let's go see Annie Get Your Gun. Let's just see what they've been asking you to come do, be a part of. My intermission, or halftime, as the Cowboys call it, <laughs> at, at my intermission, I, we looked at each other and said, I've got to be on that stage. I want to do this more than anything. That's crazy. That is crazy. Thanks that's to a that's catering truck. Did, right you, did you go up to New York and see it? I wasn't lucky enough to get to do that, and that's why I keep hoping she's going to accept a lot of these offers, people saying, would you please come back to Broadway? Well, you know what? I did see it. I did go up and see it, and it was right after we had shot the pilot. All right, so that's all. We just shot the pilot, just spent 10 days or so together, and uh, she was kind enough to invite me to come see it, and I came to see the next to the last show. And I sat there with Ava watching this. And, you know, I'd done Broadway. I came out of the New York theater and uh, all that sort of traditional road to, to television. And uh, Ava and I are watching this. And people are grabbing hold of their arms, just be, uh, of their, their chair, armchair things, to, because they can't wait to stand up and applaud. They can't wait. They kept jumping up to applaud. And I'm watching this thing, and Ava keeps going, she just keeps looking at me. Anyway, we went back and said hello to Reva, and I gave her a kiss and hug, and we're walking down the street. And she said, uh, what, what is up with you? You seem so preoccupied. And I said, honey, I've seen theater all of my life. You know, I've been, been doing it forever. I said, I'm thinking that this country singer may have just done the best Broadway performance that I've ever seen. Thank you. And, and, it was. and then we get on the TV. We're, we're doing the TV show first season, and I'm kind of getting Chris over behind the refrigerator saying, what are they talking about when they're saying, <laughs> let's go do this? And, and what does this mean? And I ask you, a minute, and then just the other day I was asking you, how do you pronounce this word? <laughs> really? So Chris was, he was my safety net. He was my teacher throughout all of these these last Six, five, six year, uh, seasons doing this television show. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I've done without you. Well, you know, it's also something that everybody could do in their own lives, which is, if you don't know, don't be afraid to ask. And, Absolutely. you know, she said on that set that for when we were first starting up, she said, hey, guys, I'm just here to soak it up and learn. Tell me what you want me to do. Now, you don't have, I, I mean, you could say star or this, but frankly, we're talking about a cultural icon. Icon. With Reba McIntyre, a Nothing national short. treasure. All right, yeah. so now you have this... This well, you are. You're oh, a national sweet. treasure. That's very sweet. Yeah, not everybody has CMT devoting shows to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually. They're going to do a giant. Well, it's not really a giant. It's more of a midgets thing that we're doing at the Ox Lodge. <laughs> it's like a little thirty second commercial. I'm having to stay for it. Well, it's not being televised, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm inviting all of my friend <laughs> to come and tribute me. But uh, no, but she. Thank God for relatives. She uh, she is smart enough to uh, know what she knows and dang sure know what she doesn't know and she's going to learn what she doesn't know. You've never seen a learning curve uh, uh, like this woman has and I have to tell you I knew that she had it in her from watching Annie Get Your Gun because there are comedic moments in that but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. her sense of timing and now her recognition of what's funny and uh, really what's going nowhere is just razor sharp. So, And have you seen her grow from season number oh, one? Oh, please. Oh, my God. Go back. You know, you can buy them. You can buy the DVDs. Well, I know the DVDs, DVDs are available, yourself. yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty unbelievable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, comedy. Reba and Christopher on the Reba sitcom, now on the CW. Check your local listings, because we sure as hell don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to air twice a night on Sunday nights on the CW Network. Tomorrow night, CMT, the CMT Giant Show. Give it up for Reba McIntyre <laughs> and Christopher Rich. Thank, Thank you, guys. you, baby. Thank you, buddy.